So let's pick up where we left off last last session. Last session we were looking at objectives number one and two. Describe the role of money and explain the development of the battle system. All right. So today we are going to be looking at uh, identifying, you know, objective three. Identify the instruments of exchange. Now this one is a sh a shorter topic and really require, you know, much in-depth information. It's just basically recall. There's no concepts to understand. This part is just about recall what you have before you. So we're going to look at uh, the first thing we look at is a check. Of course, most of us might know what a check is. Sometimes you see some people at a, a, a supermarket and you know the cash register ring up the total and you see them take out a book, start writing down some stuff, and then they put the piece of paper. So a check instructs a bank to make a payment. Checks take several days to clear. If there are insufficient funds, a check is bounced. Okay, bounce meaning that you do not pay the people that you owe. Sometimes that's a bad thing because sometimes they incur a penalty when you write a check knowing that the savings account or the account, the checking account does not have the amount of money required to pay that debt. Uh, if there are insufficient funds, a check bounce. So that's why you call bounce when you don't have any money in the checking account, but yet to wrote a check, it's going to be what you call bounce. Many businesses do not accept checks. Most utility companies accept checks. Now, most businesses don't, many businesses don't accept checks because of the fact that some people tend to use checks to their advantages and be kind of underhanded with them. They might know that there, there's nothing in their account, but they'll write a check anyway. So that by the time the company realizes that there's nothing, by the time the check bounces, it might be too late. The person might be long gone. Okay, it's a form of, you know, it's a form of the underhanded tactic. So that's why some people, some companies either allow you to incur a significant cost for bounce checks or they straight up just don't accept checks at all. Next one we're looking at is bill of exchange. A bill of exchange promises to pay funds at a later date. They are often used in international trade. The first, the first bills of exchange were written more than 2,000 years ago. So what is a bill of exchange exactly? So like I say, it's normally used for international trade. You know, sometimes it can't really send over the, the monies one time or something like that. So what they would do, the shipping company would hold the, the bill for the goods and you would have to exchange the bill for the goods for money when they reach the port. Okay, when you reach the port of arrival, uh, whatever arrangement you make with the, the persons involved in the trade negotiations. So the bill of exchange is basically you cannot get your goods until you pay the actual money. So you have to exchange the bill of exchange that has all the information that have your rights to the, to the products. You have to exchange that for the money. Debit and credit cards. Now these are real prevalent today. Most banks. Um, ATM cards are now debit cards. Now debit cards allow you the, the ability to pay for goods overseas, locally or whatever just by swiping your card. Now the difference between a debit card and a credit card is that a credit card you're actually using the bank's money. It's like a loan in a sense. So you're going to use the bank's money, swipe your card and then the bank will charge you with interest for that money. It's not your money, it's the bank's money. The debit card, on the other hand, is where you use your own money. It's money that's on your savings account that is going to be deducted when you swipe your card. So for the credit card, using the bank's money, you're going to pay interest, you're going to pay, it'll pay, pay them back. For the debit card, you know, you're using your money from your savings account. Now, security-wise, sometimes the credit card is more secure because the banks might actually reimburse you for fraudulent purchases, whereas with the debit card, you know, if somebody gets access to your debit card in your account, they can wipe you out clean. So you have to weigh the pros and cons as to when it's best to use a debit card versus a credit card. All right, so that's how we just explain the credit card. Electronic transfer and teller banking. Internet banking uses a secure website and password for electronic trans fund transfer. It's like wire transfer in a sense. Telephone banking uses a security code. All right, so back in the day before, you know, the internet was so prevalent before most people conducted e-commerce. A lot of people used to actually order stuff on the phone, use the phone as their main means of banking. 
it is not as popular today as it was back then but that's a way it, it is it's been done today still but you know it's not as popular as it was once ago these systems can be used to check an account balance transfer money between accounts pay a credit card balance pay electricity telephone or other bills get information about recent payments so the more popular one is the electronic transfer normally you know you call it online banking today you can actually go and control you know your funds online you can go and if you have two accounts you can you know take some from one put it to the next one you can actually take some money from your main account and put it to the one with a debit card when you want to make a purchase which is kind of safer to do sometimes it's best to juggle it like that you have your savings account separate from your savings that is attached to the debit card so you can go online transfer some money from the savings account to the debit and then you make your purchases like that it's somewhat safer then we have e-commerce so e-commerce is basically conducting any form of business online okay businesses use the internet to advertise and sell their products payments may be, may be made by credit card specialist companies provide secure payments so e-commerce is basically conducting business online so you have your amazon you have your ebay you have your walmart you have your paypal where you can use to pay for things online those are examples of e-commerce in action So those are the major, major payment instruments that are utilized today. But there are some others that the syllabus outlines. Those, uh, some of them are more old time. Some of them are more modern. For example, bank draft. All right, the bank draft was a older way of conducting business where you go to the bank and you write up a, a document that states the amount. Like if you want to buy something from someone overseas, you can actually get a bank draft, write it up, and pay that person overseas with the bank draft. So that the bank, your bank, is going to pay the person's bank overseas on your behalf. So the bank draft is one of the older ways of conducting business. And it's, it happens today still to a certain degree, but more popular today would be the money transfers. You have your m money or mobile money all right the m money or the mobile money is very very popular right now i think apple has launched what you call apple pay where you can act and you have android um android you have wallet the android wallet and those kind of things where you can actually take your phone and pay for things you actually scan them and you can actually pay for things based on what the vendor if the vendor allows it to happen apple launched their own credit card the other day and of course, if you have your iPhone and those things, you can use Apple Pay to pay for your products. All right, so here, here on, on, on Wikipedia, you can see a list of some of the more popular digital wallets or digital ways of paying for money. Okay, you have your Apple Pay, as I mentioned earlier. You have your Google Pay. All right, then you have your Samsung Pay. A lot of people who have the Samsung phones can use the Samsung Pay to pay for the items you also have microsoft pay master pass visa also have their own so this is one of the new frontiers in paying for things especially online okay so that's a quick look at most of these instruments of exchange all right a quick look at most of these instruments of exchange that you know we have come along with since the battery system and we have a long way to go still 